What's up everybody, we are back with another raid guide and today we're taking a look at the Restless Cabal on Mythic Difficulty. I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. And if you're watching this, I'll assume you're familiar with the heroic mechanics, so I won't be covering any of that. For this encounter you want 2 tanks, 5 healers and the rest a mix of ranged and melee DPS. If possible, have at least one boomkin, they excel at ranged tanking, but any range can do it, boomkins just do it a bit better. And one discipline priest is pretty much mandatory. Two makes it even easier, absorbs are just broken, they're really really good for this encounter. Counter. And overall dot classes are very good here, elemental shamans, boomkins, shadow priests and warlocks really shine on this encounter because they can dispel themselves, which makes managing promise of power a bit easier. With that said, you don't need to stack your raid with warlocks and shadow priests, we had two locks, two shadow priests and DPS or dispels were never an issue. So let's start out with what's new here on mythic. First of all we have the relics, they work the same as on heroic with the exception of the new mechanic essences. Each relic gets a corresponding essence which activates when its relic gets empowered. The trident gets oceanic essences. When the trident gets empowered it begins to emit oceanic essences every 6 seconds. These essences last until the trident is activated again or until a player runs into one of the essences. If you do run into one you get stunned for 8 seconds. You can break the stun with things like bubble, racials and drainic living action potion. Because of this you want to try and use up as little space as possible, they spawn on or near players, so you can always try and bait them as a group or just try and position yourself so that you spawn them close to each other. Next out is the Void Stone, which activates void essences, creates a void essence for 10 seconds every 40 seconds. Void essences draws in all players towards it, kinda like inevitable end on King Rastakan. Anytime a void essence spawns, its draw in effect will be increased. The draw and increase will reset when you activate the void stone once again. Windrush Totem is very good during this, that is if you're not like our raid immune to shamans. Where are y'all hiding? And last out is the crown, which uses the storm essence. Creates a storm essence every 20 sec, the essence deals around 12k nature damage to the nearest player every 2 sec. This damage is increased by 20% per strike on that player. It also causes annihilation if it strikes a target below 25%, so just like a mini version of the empowered crown. And just to be clear how the essence work, once you've activated a relic, its essence will be there throughout the fight. If you activate the same relic again, it resets, but it doesn't go away. And the last new thing on Mythic is the Abominations. They have a mechanic called Incomplete Form, which makes them immune to interrupts two minutes after spawning. Not really an issue, they should be dealt with before that happens. And the debuff you get after being hit by Witness the End now increases damage taken by the next Witness by 500% instead of 100% and the debuff lasts 7 seconds instead of 6 seconds. It also hits for like 2 3 times the amount that it does on heroic, so with that and the damage increase, if 2 casts go off within 7 seconds it is a wipe. So not a lot of new things to worry about mechanics wise, but due to the few new mechanics and the sheer amount of HP the bosses have on Mythic, we need to deal with this encounter a bit differently. And as I mentioned, this encounter is pretty much all about the Dark Herald and Promise of Power buff, knowing when to pick it up, how to have it up for as long as possible, and when to get dispelled. There's a few rules if you will to this, first of all if you can dispel yourself then you are in charge of yourself, if you're a warlock you make sure you're dispelled when you need to. And anytime a player with 9 stacks gets targeted by crushing doubt you need to dispel them instantly or they will die. Make sure to have a dispel order, every healer needs to know what player they will be dispelling, if dispels are too late players will die, so get a dispel order. Set up a rotation of raid cooldowns to use in order to have as much uptime on the buff as possible. For example when crushing doubt explodes everyone in the raid takes damage, I think it's around 50k or something, which means any player with 9 stacks of the buff and no defensive will die. 
So in order to survive this without dispelling, you'll need raid cooldowns or defensive, things like Barrier, Devo Aura, Aegis of Light and Spirit Link. Which of the crushing doubts you'll need cooldowns on depends a bit on your DPS and when you spawn the abominations. If a crushing doubt is right before, during or shortly after the abominations spawn, everyone should be dispelled already, which means you won't need a raid cooldown for that crushing. And on that note, you want to have a interrupt order for the abominations as well, and yes, melee will need to run around and interrupt if you don't have enough range to fill it out. This is one of the things you will wipe on the most. If any kick fails, it is pretty much a wipe, so I cannot stress this enough, work on the interrupts. And if you want our timing, CD or kick rotations, hit me up on Facebook or Patreon. And with that said, let's break down the encounter bit by bit. Our relic rotation was two tridents, two void stones and two crowns. So all our timings and cooldowns were planned around this. On pull we positioned the two bosses on top of the trident relic and you want to keep the two bosses stacked as often as possible. Range DPS and healers semi spread in one camp and the range tank to the left of them and we always moved clockwise with the range tank a bit ahead. Everyone except the three tanks takes the first dark herald buff and you start nuking Fatul until he's at around 94-92% then you swap to the speaker. We used pain suppression on the two first crushing doubt targets and we didn't dispel anyone due to low stacks and when most players had around 7 stacks we popped bloodlust. You want to push the speaker to 75% first then immediately swap DPS to Fatul instead. During the second crushing doubt you want to dispel the two players that got it and use raid cooldowns for the rest if possible so you don't need to dispel them. Make sure you nuke down the visage as well so you don't get feared but don't ever hard swap to a visage unless it's needed, let dots, cleaves do most of the heavy lifting. After this push Fathil to 75% and start dispelling, make sure everyone is dispelled before the first witness the end goes off. You want to deal with the abominations as fast as you can, you cannot let two casts go off within 7 seconds of each other or you will die, so coordinating the interrupts and never missing one is crucial. We had one of our healers coordinate when we let a cast go off. If he didn't say anything, everyone kept interrupting until he said let green go off or let moon go off, etc. During this we moved both bosses and the raid to the void stone relic and kept our DPS on Fathul. Pick up the next dark herald buff when it's safe, for us this was herald number 6. Use raid cooldowns to survive the fourth crushing doubt without dispelling, and push Fathul to around 55% and swap to the speaker and push him to 50% to activate the first void stone. As soon as you break the shield on the speaker you want to swap back to Fathul and push him as well. Pushing them in quick succession makes everything a bit easier. After you've activated the void stone for the second time you almost never swap from Fathul again. During the void stone's healing immunity tanks should use heavy cooldowns and tank swap during it if needed. Make sure to dispel everyone before the fifth crushing doubt detonates and following this you want to deal with the abominations the same way as before. Make sure to keep an eye on the visage and start moving the boss to the last relic. After the abominations you want to again pick up the next safe herald buff. For us that was number 14. Use raid cooldowns if needed to survive the seventh crushing without dispelling and dispel everyone before the end. 8th crushing. We pushed Fatal to 25 first for the crown relic and for us this was just a few seconds after the 8th crushing. Handle the abominations just like before, you can keep them interrupted during the crown relic if healing is an issue, but the faster you deal with them the better. We let one cast go off directly and then kept the two that were left interrupted until after the crown was done. You then want to push speaker to 25% as soon as possible after Fatal is done empowering the crown. Just just make sure that this doesn't overlap with Witness the End or Crushing Doubt, if you can avoid it. The timings for us went something like this, 3 for sec after the 8th crushing Fatal hit 25%, the speaker was around 29% at this point. We were done with the abominations like 10 sec before the 9th crushing doubt exploded and we pushed the speaker to 25% at the same time as the crushing exploded, which is not the best timing, but it worked out fine. And dealing with the crown itself can be very tricky and it is very healing intense, tanks especially needs to keep an eye on their damage intake, so they don't drop under 25% HP. Again, heavy cooldowns is recommended here. 
And you want to keep in mind that the Void Essence is active, and if you're unlucky it will line up with the Crown's AoE. It is manageable, but it makes things a bit annoying, especially with the Oceanic Essences everywhere, and the Void Crashes as well. You can have players with immunity clear up these essences when needed, or before the Void Essence activates to make things a lot easier. You can also push the bosses directly after a Void Essence to be safer, but that might mean you have to stop DPS at some point, which which is not great if you can avoid it. Anyways, when you're done with both the crowns, it is just a DPS race. You want to pick up the next safe herald after the speaker's AoE has ended. For us, this was herald number 21. We didn't use any raid cooldowns for the 10th crushing doubt, but we dispelled everyone with high stacks before the 11th crushing doubt. If you can survive that one with externals, raid cooldowns, great. Not mandatory, but more DPS is always good. And pretty much after all the relics are done, all you do is pick up the buff, dispel before a crushing doubt, pick up a new buff, dispel, etc, etc. Keep clearing oceanic essences as often as possible, keep a track of the storm essences, they start hurting a lot if they ramp up on one target. And as I previously mentioned, if you go below 25% when you're the closest player to a storm essence, you instantly die. And that's pretty much it for the overall strat for this encounter, I just want to leave you with a few few extra tips and tricks for this encounter. Absorbs are really really good, with enough absorbs you can survive the crushing doubt raid wide damage even at 9 stacks of the buff. DPS can for example use the opulence tank trinket, the heroic version alone gives you up to like 50k absorb. If possible you should have the resounding protection trait, and if you're an engineer you can also use the belt absorb enchant they have. So check around a bit, see what you can get absorb wise, with enough of it you won't need to be dispelled any time crushing doubt explodes without a raid cooldown. And the Voidstone Trinket from this raid can be used to keep DPS alive during crushing doubt, save tanks during healing immunities, and things like that. If you have a Protection Paladin, you can use Blessing of Spell Warding on a Priest so he can use Mass Dispel without dying. This will allow you to keep the buff on the entire raid for a bit longer. Just make sure that this is planned beforehand so everyone knows to stack up a bit for the Mass Dispel. And I think that pretty much covers everything. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues during your progression, feel free to hit me up. And if you want more in-depth info about a certain part of the fight, like tanking, DPSing, cooldown rotations, or timings, hit me up on Facebook or become a Patreon and you will get access to my Discord, where you can get all my weak auras, healing cooldowns, notes, etc. And it's the fastest way to get a hold of me. With that said, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, leave me a like, and ring that notification bell. Thank you all so much, and I will see you next time.